Hey there, race fans. I'm your man, Todd Brown of That Racing Show. Thanks for dropping by for another segment of That Racing Show's Pit Stop. Man, we got the Roval this week in Charlotte. A lot of action taking place around Charlotte Motor Speedway. And uh, we're going to talk about some historic Charlotte racing, but it's not going to be at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's going to be, in fact, Charlotte Speedway. There was two of them located in the Charlotte area in the past, all the way back to the 20s. So when I found out some information about this racetrack that's a story piece of history i had to share it with you because man it is just some cool ass information and uh could not wait to get it to you now as i say this racetrack was built back in the 20s it was a one and a quarter mile racetrack that was built by local businessmen who funneled together three hundred and eighty thousand dollars to fund the track and it was considered at the time one of the premier racing facilities in the southeast and on the east coast and attracted a lot of attention and a lot of fans from across the country. Now, here is the most cool part about this racetrack. It was completely made of wood. If you take a look at this, it had a wooden structure, all the foundation made of wood, wooden racing surface, wooden grandstands, and I promise you, wouldn't survive a fire because... Everything there was made of wood, and that is just so super cool to me. I know there were different tracks at the time that were made of wood like this, and uh, but just to know that there was one in North Carolina is so cool. And uh, as I say, it's located in Pineville, so technically it wasn't Charlotte, but as uh, most of the racetracks around here, they've got the name Charlotte Speedway because it's the Queen City and it's uh, the major attraction, so boom, they put the name on it. Now, the race was entered by... 14 different drivers, as I found out. Um, only 10 of them actually made it to the race, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, but one of the other cool things about this racetrack that I, I really just find amazing is that if you take a look at this, it had a 40-degree banking. That right there is just mind-blowing to me to have a 40-degree banking on a one-and-a-quarter-mile track in 1924. These guys were out there running speeds of over 110, 150 miles per hour. And uh, that is just completely mind-blowing to know that that was happening in a open cockpit car. And uh, just something of this nature is it's just so cool. Now, of the 14 drivers, I do know what happened to one of them, who uh, was Ernie Ansterberg. He was involved in a wreck nine days prior to the inaugural race. And uh, it was on October 16th of 1924. He reportedly had a front tire that locked up and sent him into the upper guardrail, and the car sailed through the air approximately 36 yards before landing and rolling and tumbling down to the bottom of the racetrack. And if we take a look at these vehicles, you can see that it was a very open cockpit car. There was really no safety measures for the driver's upper torso as it stuck out of the vehicle. And if we take a look at Ernie himself here, you can see that the headgear was basically just fighter pilot wear, no protection to provide any safety measures in case of a rollover or anything like that. And unfortunately, in the accident, Ernie was killed tragically. And uh, I did find a newspaper clipping of the time where it listed that The Undertaker listed his injuries as a broken neck, two broken shoulders, and a crushed skull. So obviously not the greatest way to start out racing at the new Charlotte Speedway. But things did get better and they got more exciting and... Uh, the, the, the whole thing about this racetrack at the time was it was something that was needed and something new in the area, and it drew in the fans. And if you take a look at this right here, you can see the inaugural race. It had over 30,000 spectators that came. You can see the drivers lined up with, obviously, people from the, uh, the series and the owners or whatever. And uh, it grew so much so fast that by the next year in May of 1925, they had over 55,000 people that showed up for the race, and, uh, and it was just some cool racing. Now, the coolest thing about it is that the race was actually won by Tommy Milton. He took home a $10,000 winner purse that day, and uh, the cool thing about Tommy was he was a very storied guy in the Indy Series. He was the first repeat winner in the Indy 500, and he ran a total of eight Indy 500s, finished in the top five, and half of them. And uh, ran his last one in 1927 because he had to retire because of health and physical issues. And the, the cool thing about him is that he only had one functioning eye. So to think about driving a car like this at that time, obviously the wind, everything had to be just so impactful. And he only got one eye. 
that was just really amazing to uh to hear of a story like that and especially to know that he won the very first race at the charlotte speedway now he returned to indy in 1936 as a pace car driver and uh, continued a, a storied part of his history as he was the pace, uh, pace car driver, and he suggested to the sanctioned body, why not give the pace car to the winner and uh, started a tradition that carried on. And, man, that's really cool that uh, there's so much information about him out there like that. Now, the racing continued, as I say, in 1925. 55,000 spectators showed up for that. Uh, you can take a look at this to see... The amazing crowd there, the colors. It had to be something so cool to take in at the moment and be a part of. I wish there was so much more out there about this, but it is something that's really difficult to find information on because it just was not preserved. And uh, I mean, I'm going to say this. If anybody out there has any information on this, please tell me in the comments because this is a racetrack that I would love to find out more about and share with everybody. And uh, just as I say, if you know anything about this or have any stories about it, please share them down below. Because this is a really cool piece of history of North Carolina, and uh, especially the Charlotte area. Now, the race, by 1926, the racetrack had apparently started deteriorating, uh, coming apart. There are reports that I read of boards actually sticking up and just kind of being more of a dangerous scenario. So, at the uh, November of 1926 race, there was only 7,500 people that came in attendance. And it started the very slow demise, which I guess turned into a quick demise for the racetrack as uh, their last race was ran in September of 1927 before coming to a closing. And uh, just it's terrible that something like that happened uh, to something that obviously they put so much money into. But it's so cool that the, the history was there. Uh, the, the track ran 15 total races over that three year period and seven of them were major 250 mile races. They were a AAA sanctioned race and uh, man it had to be so cool just to to be a part of and see. And uh, like I say, just knowing that the history is there, that's it's something just amazingly cool to me. Now, I did uncover a picture of the Speedway that was supposedly in 1927. It did look uh, pretty shoddy at the time. Uh, there was it seemed like a lot of overgrowth growing around it from the environment, kind of maybe like it was taking it over a little bit. Um, unfortunately the picture is just in such bad shape I really can't share it with you because it would do no justice to to try to share it but um, we yeah, obviously just went through a little rough time there at the end and it later became Southland Industrial Park that the, the way I understand it right now is that's where CarMax is located in Charlotte off of South Boulevard uh, I-45 area so uh, when you ever scooting by there just think about that there was uh, some ghost of racers past that ran around in that area and uh yeah, just some cool cool information now after that there was another charlotte speedway that actually was in charlotte north carolina it was a three-quarter mile dirt track that uh hosted races from 1949 to 1956 it was located off little rock road near the airport and uh has a very storied his history in itself it uh actually was the inaugural race for the 1949 NASCAR Strictly Stock Series. And uh, they raced at uh, the Charlotte track. They followed that up with running Daytona Beach Road Course and finished out the season at North Wilkesboro on the dirt track. Uh, had a combined uh, total of eight races for the year, and I believe there was two exhibition races outside of that. Uh, but just a cool, cool fact there to know that the the Charlotte was such a, a big part because if you know the history of NASCAR, you know it was just beginning and you know that um, that was such a part of the making of, of the, the series for that year. And uh, the first race was ran June 19th, 1949. Bob Flock set on the pole. Jim Roper was the winner and uh, just some cool stuff there. I, you can find stories about people that used to sneak up and watch the races through the cracks and everything like that. A lot of cool information on this racetrack and uh, Unfortunately, I, I can't find a lot of imagery of it and uh, wish there was some more. So if you have any of those, please direct me to those as well, because we'd love to share them with everybody and just make this uh, little piece of history something more attainable to everybody. Now, unfortunately, the racetrack come to an end in 1956 when I-85 was being built. They uh, pretty much just made it right through the parking lot for the speedway. And obviously, without parking, you can't have racing. So they had to close the doors on it, and um, 
just a, a, a neat piece, unfortunately, a sad piece that progress took over the racetrack. But uh, just just such cool history that I, I, I hope you're enjoying hearing about because I really am just fascinated with this and I'm just so happy to share it with you. Now, as I say, once again, if you, you know if you know anything about either one of these racetracks, please comment down below. Give us some subscribes so you can keep up with what's uh, what's happening here because we've got a lot of cool things coming. Especially you want to keep up with other history like this and, and do some fun things and things that nobody else is doing that uh, we hope you're very interested in as we progress. Now, if you're in the Charlotte area for the Roval, check out everything around town. There's some very cool things to do in the Charlotte area. Going to be some great racing, uh, definitely at the Speedway. And as I've talked about here in recent days, um, the Grand National Super Series will be at Carteret County Speedway on October 8th with the... Uh, the two uh, Twin 50 feature races that Jeremy Mayfield will be in. So uh, AJ Hendrickson, just different drivers. I don't know the whole list right now, uh, but some some great drivers, some great racing. So you might want to check that out if you're in town and around and want some more racing. But everybody just uh, have a great time this weekend. Enjoy all the racing. Check out everything that we have to offer here in the Charlotte area and uh, just be safe. And I got another episode coming over the weekend. So hopefully check that out. And uh, as always, I just want to say, have a good time at the races, and we'll see you at the checkered flag.